Hey guys, and welcome back to a new video. In this video, I will review the new core feature of the new stable Android Studio Jellyfish, which is an AI integration. So on the one hand, we have a new chatbot AI, which I've reviewed previously half a year ago on my YouTube channel, which was called StudioBot. But now we will rename that to Gemini, so to their new AI model. And it's included in the stable Android Studio version. On the other hand, this new AI can also be used for code suggestions. So something like GitHub Copilot, we now have directly inside of Android Studio. I've tried it out and uh, I will highlight everything from my experience. I can always say this is going to be um, one of the more funny videos because we can find this new AI here by opening uh, Gemini. This is a new little tab we have in Android Studio. Of course, make sure to have Jellyfish installed. And then this is nothing new for you if you've watched my previous video. So we pretty much just have a chat GPT here inside of Android Studio. You can see I already asked some questions and uh, this already gave me a good laugh. So I asked who is Phil Blackner and uh, apparently I'm from Austria. Um, apparently my YouTube channel has over 1.5 million subscribers. I wish. And my, my courses have been taken by over 200,000 students worldwide. And apparently I'm the CEO <laughs> of MindOrix. So um, Gemini has some information here that I don't even have myself. And apparently I'm also a regular speaker at international conferences. All right. But in this video, we will also find out how good this new AI really is for Android development. That is what it was made for. So we just have an integrated AI in Android Studio, which we can ask our Android questions. And the cool thing is it has context of our project. That's at least what we can configure. So the first time you open this tab, you will have to go through a little uh, questionnaire where you also need to configure if and how much context you want to grant it. If you've already done that, then you can also still change that here in the settings under Gemini. You can see I ticked use context from your projects to improve responses. So by default, we just grant context to all of our um, classes, all of our files. We can also ask to decide per project. So if you have certain projects you don't want to share with Google service, which is obviously what would happen here um, if you ask questions about your project, then you can also disable this um, per project. So maybe you are working on a client's project, you sign an NDA that you're not allowed to share this code with anyone else, with any third parties, then of course, make sure that you're not sharing this code with Gemini. And all in all, I have tried this new AI, as I said, half a year ago, and it was super disappointing. So it was really just a garbage AI. We couldn't really do anything with it. Now that this is included in the stable version of Android Studio, that sounded really promising to me. So I went ahead and the first question I asked it was, how I can center this greeting default composable on my screen. And the answer, I don't know what to say about that. Take a look here. It simply invented a new language. It mixed XML and Jetpack Compose code together and then suggested me to just include that <laughs> in our UI. <laughs> However, I thought that can happen. Let's give it another chance. So I asked it to just create a little increment counter text, which I can increment by clicking a button, which worked fine. And then I asked it, how we can now center these elements on our screen. And the answer was this. So on the first glance, that might look fine. It created a column, it used the align modifier to that column and aligns these items in the screen's center. How about those of you who are regularly using Compose will know that this won't work. So on the one hand, this align modifier is only applicable inside of a box composable. And on the other hand, this column does not fill the whole screen size. So we're really, if we were centering something inside that column, it wouldn't really do something because the column itself is not centered on the screen. So far, so good. But one thing I have to give Gemini, it's really confident about its responses. Since after giving me that answer, I asked, are you confident with that? And it spit out this text. It was super confident. It even gave me an explanation about that. And it especially gave me a good laugh because it wrote, this solution has been tested and verified to work as expected. So I wonder what kind of internal testing <laughs> Gemini did there, but obviously that did not work. But I asked once more, will this really center these items on the screen? And it again went over a similar explanation as before, but encouraged me even more that I can be very, very confident that this code behaves correctly. Simply following the motto that you just need to be confident enough to make people believe you. And seriously, guys, these weren't just exceptions I captured for this video to make it funny. This AI is still so much trash. We can also do some live experiments here. Ask it, what is the best way to create a version catalog, for example? Let's see what it spits out. It waits a little moment. Best way. Yes. You see, you see, I called it. 
Apparently, we are creating version catalogs like this directly inside of our settings Gradle file. We are hard coding every single version. We're hard coding these dependencies. And then we have a no type safe way of accessing these. Or let's ask it something else. I don't know what's the easiest, or what, what is the best way to create a view model reference? Let's take a look if it is able to answer that. Using the view model provider, okay, that seems correct. By hill view model also seems correct. This, I don't know, I haven't used assisted injection with fragments, but okay, this answer seemed okay. So you can see we also have buttons to directly copy this code or insert it at the cursor or insert it into a new Kotlin file. So that itself is very useful if the code would be useful. Let's ask it something else as a last question here. Um, what is the easiest way to create a long list in Jetpack Compose? Let's see if it at least knows lazy columns. <laughs> but you can see those are really basic questions and it is still not able to give very good answers. Um, okay, this at least looks correct. So. Some very easy questions it is able to answer, uh, but you also just saw how bad it is at other types of answers. Maybe one last little bit more advanced question. Uh, how can I get navigation arguments inside my view model? Let's see if it knows that, if it knows how to use saved state handle. Yes, it speaks of saved state handle. <laughs> but here you can see how, <laughs> how much trash these responses are. It creates arguments by creating a view model instance without any view model providers, without binding it to any lifecycle, just creating a view model class instance, passing some kind of arbitrary safe state handle in here, and then referring to the view model's arguments, which does not even exist. So it's really not usable. And I really had some hope that Google improves this, but this is really no better than it was half a year ago when this was in canary mode. So it does not matter on which level you are as an Android developer, don't use this AI yet, and probably also not in the next month, because I don't see that this improves a lot in a very short time. If you're a beginner, I'm actually a really big fan of using AI in order to learn things, in order to let AI explain complex topics in a simple manner, but don't use this AI. Use ChatGPT, it's really much, much better at this point, or use some other kind of LLM you are confident about, but don't use Gemini. I felt like the official Gemini version is much better and gives much better responses than this here, which Google claimed to be optimized for Android development, but I don't see how they actually release something like that in a stable Android Studio version, where they know what this leads to, because Beginners will use this, beginners will learn Android development in absolutely the wrong way. They will be ultimately confused by such answers here. And yes, I know they claim it's still in preview mode, but I find this pretty dangerous for newbies jumping into Android development who would probably expect that this AI, which comes from Google, the company that is behind Android and Android development and Android Studio and Gemini, and that the quality of responses is maybe at 10% compared to ChatGPT4. But enough for the rant, I want to also get to something more positive and something that works better. And that is the new Code Companion, which is also run by Gemini, which gives us code suggestions. So it tries to predict the code we are trying to type and we can then easily autocomplete that by hitting tab. Let's see how that works. Minimize this, open some kind of file in our project here, main activity. And for example, um, if we were to remove this greeting here and we would type this by hand, then after we wait a little bit, you can see that it tries to um, predict the next section of our code, since it is on the one hand context aware, so it knows this greeting composable down here, and then tries to predict what we actually want to type here. And you can see now that I type the T, it actually gives us exactly the same code as before. We can hit tap to autocomplete that, and now we have a working greeting composable. Let's maybe just write the code for a little increment counter app. So we have a centered text and a centered button. And when we click the button, we will increment the counter. So first of all, we want some count state. Okay, you can see it suggests to setting that to zero, but we actually want the compose state. So let's say by, remember, that's correct. For some reason, it does not include the second curly bracket, but that's easily fixed by hitting enter. And it also says the mutable state of zero. You can hit Alt Enter. Unfortunately, it does not import these um, these functions here automatically. That will be great. Let's import everything here. But other than that, that is already pretty solid. Okay, here we actually need mutable in state of, or we should use that. So let's replace that. But this is something I will consider fine. All right, let's now add our column. Let's see. Okay, it wants us to autocomplete the 
um, normal parentheses. Let's have that fill the whole size of our screen. Okay, modifier. Oh, you just saw that. Fill max size, padding, inner padding. Perfect. That's exactly what I wanted. We can then also center it horizontally. Horizontal alignment. Okay, here it's not suggesting anything. Now it is alignment, center horizontally. Import that. Do the same for vertical arrangement. Arrangement dot center. There we go. We can auto complete it. You can see that works pretty well. And in here we can have a little text where we display the count. You can see it. It also su suggested that. And we have a button <laughs> to auto uh, to to increment the count. And we can auto complete that. Import the button. And there we go. That's our increment counter. And this is something where I see that that is actually useful. That I will definitely keep turn on in Android Studio. So I've also used that in some some bigger projects. It's not always perfect. It's off maybe in 50% of the cases that it uh, suggests something I don't want. But then I just go on with typing since that is what I would need to do anyways. Of course, just like for the Gemini AI, don't trust this blindly. Don't think that every single suggestion is exactly what you want, especially if you're a beginner and you don't yet understand the internal workings of things. Then it's better to open some docs, get some courses, watch some tutorials to learn how things really work. But if you are already very familiar with Android development and you can easily assess if a suggestion makes sense or not, then this is indeed a big help. So it's of course not yet at the point where it really feels like doing uh, pair programming with your body. So it rather tries to autocomplete what you wanted to type anyways, instead of already giving you parts of your solution before you even come up with a solution on your own. So that would obviously be the next level. I've also heard around a little bit and talked to other people what they think of this new AI, and they were also pretty impressed. Um, they were starting to really like it and using that in their projects. So it's definitely not annoying. It's definitely something I would use, I would not disable. And then I'm pretty sure you can save a few keystrokes here and there. So to summarize, the text-based Gemini AI gets a big thumbs down from me and the autocomplete Gemini AI gets a big thumbs up from me. And I'm pretty sure that some of you have already also tried Gemini, have asked a few questions, and I would say, Let's put the funniest responses from Gemini below this video. Let's have a little collection and see what kind of trash advice Gemini gave you. So comment that below. Other than that, thanks for watching the video and I will see you back in the next one. Have an amazing rest of your week. Bye bye.